it's 2022. The perfect time to announce the sequel to 1988's Beetlejuice. What are we doing anymore? It was just reported recently that Brad Pitt's production company, Plan B Entertainment, just said Beetlejuice's name three times, which gets him to appear. That's a, that's a reference to the film. Subscribe for movie references. Michael Keaton and Winona Ryder are back, baby! Reprising their role from the 80s hit film. Is Tim Burton coming back to direct this one? I don't know. What about Catherine O'Hara or Gina Davis? No idea. Is Alec Baldwin returning? I'm gonna guess not. He's been, he's been dealing with some shit lately. All we know for certain is this thing could get greenlit any day now and production can begin as early as this coming summer. <laughs> how, how exciting. Honestly, I'm just getting kind of fed up with this shit. These sequels come out decades after the original. They try to recapture the lightning in a bottle, the magic that you saw on display. The writing is usually hacky at best, full of nostalgic references. It doesn't have half the cast back, and the ones they do get are 40 years older. Uh, they're tired, they're not as exciting as they were. Granted, Michael Keaton is still at the top of his game. He is hilarious. He can put on all these different costumes and sell us. He's gonna be Batman again. So I do have confidence he can do it. Um, he's, he's really getting this like renaissance lately and it's, it's great, I'm all for it. But I just, I don't have any faith in any other part of this. Now, not all these sequels are bad. We've had some really good ones that came out Years and years after the original. Look at Blade Runner recently. Solid film, very solid. Mad Max Fury Road blew me away and a lot of others. Although that felt less like a sequel and more like a, almost a, a reboot of sorts. It's, it was really its own thing. Some people really like Tron Legacy as well. So there are definitely examples, but then you have the Coming to America sequel or Dumb and Dumber 2, the abysmal Zoolander 2. There's a ton you can look at also and say, man, what, why? Why? I am a fan of the original Beetlejuice, not a super fan by any means. Uh, I did really enjoy the movie. I recently rewatched it with my kids at Halloween. They both really liked it too, and they're 9 and 13. So there's definitely an audience. Uh, you know, the, the new generation, I think, as long as their parents showed them the original film, probably would eat a sequel up. I've just been burned an awful lot by movie studios trying to bring back classics for a new generation. Look at the recent Home Alone. What an abysmal waste of everyone's time. So yeah, just a quick video reporting on this news. Would love to hear what you think in the comments below. Let me know if you're excited about Beetlejuice 2 or if you're kind of like me and just thinking, Ugh, I don't, I don't care, I don't need it. There's the possibility it could be great. There's also a much larger possibility it won't. So maybe we should just let sleeping dogs lie. I think that's the expression. I don't, I don't know. Subscribe to the channel if you like movie commentary, reviews, rants. I do them all here. And hopefully I'll see you next time. Hey, since you're still here, maybe you're one of the people that have been watching me for a while and thinking about ways you can give back. Well, I'm on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. There's a $1 tier even, or a $5, $10, depending on what you want to give and how much you appreciate what I'm doing. Or you can become a YouTube Join member right here. Hit that Join button and you get access to exclusive videos and a lot of the same perks the Patreons do. If you're a poor college student or you just have to save that money for a Starbucks every day on the way to work, I get it. In that case, maybe just share the video around with your friends and family, post it on Twitter, Facebook, all that crap. Yeah, every little bit helps. I appreciate it.